Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to everyone worshipping here this morning. It's, it's good to be here and it's good to come together around God's Word to, to worship Him. Uh, I'm, I'm a visitor myself and it's always a privilege to come and share in, in this time of worship. But if there, is, uh, if there are any other visitors here, a special welcome to you. It's always good to have visitors and to welcome others into the, the family Everyone, I'm told, should have a notice sheet, and all the notices are on there, so please do have a good look at it. It's not something just to pick up at the door and then just put somewhere in the house when you get home and forget about it. It's all there for your interest and for your prayerful thoughts and attendance as well, so please uh, have a look at the notice sheet. We're going to begin by singing from Psalm 93 in Sing Psalms, that's on page 123 in the in the psalm book, sing Psalms 93, and we'll sing the, the whole psalm. The Lord is king, his throne endures, majestic in its height. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength and might. The world is founded firm and sure, removed it cannot be. Your throne is strong, and you are God for all eternity. If we're able, we'll stand to sing, please. Let's join in prayer together. Lord, we do indeed thank you that we can come together this morning around your word. We thank you that we come into the presence of the one who reigns. You, you reign on high supremely. Uh, you rule over all. And we thank you that we come to the great and mighty God, the one who inhabits eternity, who is King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you for this wonderful privilege that we have to come to worship you. We thank you for everyone who is gathered here and those who are able to listen online as well, that together we would experience your presence and your touch. And we, we ask that you would help us to focus on why we are here and what we are doing, that all distractions would be taken away 
and that we would know the blessing of God. So, Lord, we thank you. May all that stand be acceptable and glorified in your great and worthy name. And we pray that you would help us to know and to trust and to love the Lord Jesus Christ more and more every day. We thank you for all that you have done for us and continue to do. And we seek that you would forgive us, Lord, cleanse us from sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I want to share a little story with the younger people. It's good to see children here. And uh, I believe that some of the older ones are away uh, this weekend. So we will remember them in, in prayer as well and trust that they have a good time. Uh, have, having the weekend away. Well, just about a year ago, we moved into another house, retired from faith mission work, and uh, we were able to get a little house in, in Inverness. And although the house wasn't that old, everything inside the house was old, and it had uh, been empty for about a year. So we got a little bit of work done on it and did the usual painting and cleaning and were able to move in. And After a while, I was just looking at the shower. And, uh, well, although it was cleaned, it wasn't looking clean. So I thought, well, I'm going to get down to it and I'm going to give this shower a good scrubbing and get it clean. So I did that and got scrubbing at the shower, more cleaning stuff on and scrubbed and scrubbed and wiped it and it was still not clean. So started scrubbing again and more cleaning stuff and more scrubbing and more sweat and I thought, well, I probably got it a wee bit better. But the, the black mold and all was still there. It just wasn't coming off because it was right deep into it and no cleaning was going to actually clean the shower and make it look nice and clean that, uh, and uh, as it should be. So I thought to myself, well, one day we're going to get a new shower and it'll be all nice and clean. So I quite often said, well, I just look forward to when the plumber comes in and we get this, this bathroom all renewed and get the shower all new and nice and clean. So we actually managed to do that. And uh, today, we don't have any black mold. We've got it all nice, and it's all nice and clean and fresh. And as I was thinking about that, it reminded me of a verse in the Bible. Because, you know, really, with, without Jesus, we're really like the, the old shower. Because for the, for the mold and, uh, and where it was black, it was so deeply ingrained that no cleaning, no effort by me was going to make it good and clean and white and fresh. And our hearts are like that. But the Bible tells us that in Ezekiel, he says, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. So you see, the thing is that sometimes we, we try really hard and it's, it's not wrong to try hard. And if we're doing wrong things and getting it wrong, it's good to try harder and to, to do things better. But it'll never solve our hearts. That'll never make our hearts clean. So we need God to do that. And our hearts as they are are not hearts that love Jesus. They're not hearts that trust Jesus. That there we have sinful hearts. But the wonderful news of Jesus is that he will come and he will give us a new heart. He says, and I will put a new spirit within you. And I will give you a heart of flesh. In other words, he'll give us hearts that will love Jesus. He'll give us hearts that are forgiven. But we need to come to him and trust him and ask him to be our savior. I wonder if you ever done that. Have you ever come to Jesus and asked him to forgive you and to be your savior so that you'll not be like the, what our shower was like and no matter what cleaning or what effort I put into trying to get it clean, I couldn't do it. And you can't do that for your heart. But we can turn to Jesus and he will do it. 
And he'll give us hearts that are clean and hearts that are forgiving and hearts that will love him and trust him and want to follow him all the days of our lives. So that's the hearts that we need to make sure that we have, that, that Jesus has dealt with the sin in our lives. I will give you a new heart and I will put a, a new spirit I will put within you. What a wonderful saviour we, we have indeed. We're going to sing again, and this time it's from Psalm 34. That's in the Sing Psalms part of the psalm book again. It's on page 40. Psalm 34 at page 40. And we're going to sing from verse 7 to verse 11. Verse 7, the angel of the Lord surrounds and guards continually all those who fear and honor him. He sets his people free. Come taste and see, the Lord is good. Who trusts in him is blessed. Oh, fear the Lord, you saints with need. You will not be oppressed. These verses in Psalm 34 from verse 7 to 11, and if you're able, please stand to sing. Well, that certainly left a few empty seats, didn't it? But it's wonderful to have all the children, isn't it? And to just to see them going out there to Sunday school and creche. It's such a joy. Let's pray for them. Lord, we do indeed thank you for our young people. We thank you for families. We thank you for all these young people that have just gone out to their Sunday school classes and creche. We pray for those who teach them. And we ask that they might have a really special, blessed time or as they look at your word in a way that's appropriate and right for them. So Lord, we pray that they would grow to know and to love Jesus while they're young and to follow him all the days of their lives. Protect them, we pray, from all the evil that is in this world. And we pray that your arms would surround them. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you would keep them and instruct them and teach them in your ways as they grow and go on. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to read 
God's Word now, and it's from the Gospel of John and chapter 5, John's Gospel and chapter 5. we we'll read from the beginning down to the end of verse marked 18. John 5. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethsaida, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, he learned that he had been in this condition for a long time and asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. When I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And so the Jewish leaders said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, Who is this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who made him well. So because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jewish leaders began to persecute him. In his defense, Jesus said to them, My father is always at work to this very day, and I too am working. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was calling, even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Amen. And may God bless the reading of his own precious word. Let's again unite in prayer. Lord, we do indeed thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is a powerful word, and it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. We thank you that you have given it to us. Thank you that we are here and we are, we're, it's in the center. Your word is central to all that we do, and we praise you and thank you for that. You are central. And so we, we praise you as we come to you and we ask that you would help us to draw near to you, O God, and that you would draw near to us. We thank you for this lovely day and for health and strength to be able to be up and on the go. And we thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. Thank you for all that we have. We're blessed with so much. And we know that there's many other people in many areas today who have so little and we think of those who are persecuted and we pray for your people who are struggling, who are imprisoned, who have had to flee from their homes, who are some of them even moving about in jungles with, with little of the necessities of life, just trying to keep safe. Lord, would you come to your people today who are persecuted? Please protect them and please encourage them. Keep them strong in their faith and may they be so aware of the one who comes alongside to help them. We pray for areas where there is war and we think of Ukraine and we think of Gaza and we think of the conflicts that are going on in those parts. And Lord, we ask you that we come to the one who is able to make wars to cease while we don't see any answers or solutions, but yet you are the solution. You are the answer to everything and you know you are the beginning and the end, the first and the last, and you know how it will all work out. And we pray for your will to be done. And we pray, O oh Lord, for your, your people who are caught up in these conflicts as well will be 
those on both sides. And so we pray for your protection. And we pray for help. We pray for aid to those, for those who are struggling. We pray for medical supplies. We pray for the injured. And we pray for the bereaved. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would draw close to them in such a time as this. We pray, O oh Lord, for any today who are struggling in various ways. We pray for those who are not well and where illness has struck so suddenly. And we know that there are those who are known to us who are going through uh, this time of trouble, even, even just now. And Lord, we lift them up before you and pray that your nearness would be their portion, your comfort would be their help. And we ask you, Lord, that you would strengthen and encourage even through these times of, of struggle and trial. We pray for any who are missing loved ones who are needing so much your comfort day by day. And we pray that that would be so. Lord, bless the young people away for the weekend. We thank you for the, the young people in the Sunday school and crash today. We thank you for the youth fellowship. And we pray for them and those who are away with them to teach and to instruct and to help. We pray that it would be such a blessed weekend, that lives would be transformed, that perhaps any who don't know you would come to know you. Perhaps those who are struggling would be encouraged to go on in their walk with you. So please make this a really blessed weekend, that they be so aware of the presence of God, the presence that makes the feast. O Lord, undertake for us and all gathered like we are today. We pray for your servants who will declare your word, that they would know the, the help of the Holy Spirit of God, that there might be much blessing following the preaching of the word, that we would know a day of God's reviving power sweeping through our land once again. We're so needy. We're so desperately in need of you, our Father, and we pray that you would come forgive us for, for our sin, forgive us for just our, our, our lack of seal for, for the gospel and for the word. And we pray that you would lift us up and strengthen us and encourage us in you and help us this day as we continue in worship. We give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing once again before we turn back to this passage that we've uh, read from. And this time, it's still in Sing Psalms, Sing Psalms 38. That's on page 48 of the psalm book. Page 40. <coughs> page 48, Sing Psalms 38. And we're going to sing verses 13 to 22, 13 to the end of the psalm. I'm like a deaf who cannot hear, and like the mute who cannot cry. I'm like a man who hears no sound, whose mouth can offer no reply. I wait for you, O Lord my God, and you, O Lord, will answer me. I prayed to you. If my foot slips, let them not gloat exultantly. We'll sing these verses from verse 13 to the end of the psalm to God's praise.
just a word of prayer before we turn to the Word of God. Oh Lord, we, we're so conscious that whenever we come to your Word, we're, we're not able to come to it as we should. We're aware that for speaker and for hearers alike, we need your help. And we pray for your help. And we seek your Holy Spirit's enabling as we look at the Word together that you would speak into our hearts with power, we pray, for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, just to turn back to this passage that we've read from, and uh, if, you, if you're the person you like a text, we'll take it, verse 6 in John's Gospel, chapter 5 and verse 6. It says, uh, When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been there, being in this condition a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? Someone said, I don't know who the quote came from, but the quote is, if you really want to do something, you'll find a way. And if you don't, you'll find an excuse. It's true, isn't it? If you really want to, you'll find a way. But if you don't want to, you'll find an excuse. It's just reminded uh, of those verses in Matthew where it says, uh, enter by, enter by the, the narrow gate. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. Remember a long time ago at a godly uncle, I don't know, some of you might have known him or might remember him, he was our uncle, Andrew, Andrew Ross. He lived in, in Dingwall, and uh, brought up in, in Rogert. And uh, just after his death, I believe, I, I heard that the minister who was uh, preaching that day made reference to him and about those who find it are few. And he said something to the effect that Andrew Ross, who's not with us anymore, was numbered among those few. When it cannot be said for you and for me today that we would be numbered if somebody was to say and whatever your name is is not with us anymore. But they were numbered among that few. You know, that's the most wonderful thing that, that could be said about us, to be numbered among those who entered in by the narrow gate and the way that leads to life. Jesus did many miracles uh, or signs and wonders. And there's a number in, in the gospel throughout all the gospels. Just leading up to this passage that we're talking about today, we, we can read about the, the woman at the well, the woman of Samaria. And uh, the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans, but Jesus did. He didn't shy away from people who were who were in need, and there was the healing of the official son, and Jesus even didn't even go to the house, but he told the official, just go, and your son will live, and that was so. We started the chapter here, and sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews, and so on. It's amazing, isn't it, how we read through the scriptures, and we see the plan of God unfolding, and that, that's it's just wonderful to see that. And how often Jesus was in the place where there was needy people or a needy person. You know, sometimes we, we like large numbers, don't we? And we, we rightly just long to see these seats full. We long to see that our churches wouldn't be big enough to, mean, to hold everyone that would want to come to, to worship him. We, we long for that day. But yet we don't despise the day of small things and everyone is precious and Jesus often went out of his way for one person. Needy people. You know, in, in reality, we're all needy people. We, we, we are all needy people. And we're especially needy if we don't have Jesus. And I want us to look at this passage simply and, and quickly this morning. 
First of all, looking at the fact that there was a multitude here of needy people, we're told in verse 2, now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethsaida, and which is surrounded by five roofed colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, and, and the paralyzed. This uh, area where there was a pool, it probably was a place where many sheep were led for the purpose of being sacrificed in the nearby temple court. And there was this pool, and there was individuals, and there was these roofed areas round about it where uh, those people could come and, and they could sit and they could be protected from the weather and, and from the sun. And we're told that there was just a multitude of people like that there. And they were blind and lame and paralyzed. And this, this is really a picture of mankind, spiritually speaking. We're spiritually blind and lame and paralyzed. Blind because... We can't see Jesus. With, with, being, with spiritually, spiritual blindness, we can't see Jesus. We're lame, spiritually lame. We're not following Jesus without him. And we're paralyzed. Remember the man that was paralyzed on, uh, and, and he was on the mat and the four friends came along and carried him along and the the Lord him down through the roof. He couldn't do anything for himself. He was physically paralyzed. Well, that's what we're like spiritually. We're paralyzed. And, and you might be saying, well, I, ho I hope we're going to move on to, to something more encouraging than this. And you might be saying, well, if this is what I'm going to hear today, I wonder why did I bother coming? Well, this is why. Because Bartimaeus cried out to Jesus and, and his eyes were opened. And he could see Jesus. The, the lame man, remember, I think I spoke about this the last time I was here. The lame man was carried to the temple gates. And that's as far as he got. But when he met with Jesus, he, he was walk up and he was walking and he was leaping and he was praising God. The paralyzed man on the mat. He couldn't do anything for himself. But they lowered him down in front of Jesus. And what did Jesus say to him? Son, your sins are forgiven. Take up your mat and walk. This is why. Because God's word is powerful. The gospel is powerful. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up at your bed and go home. But among this multitude of people, there was a man, we're told he was a, an invalid. And he says, you know, who, who was going to help him? Among all these people, who will help? Maybe there's someone here today and, and you're, you're in need of help. And maybe there's a cry in your heart and you're saying, who will help me? Well, the answer is always the same. And the answer never changes. Jesus will help you. There was the, the multitude of these people who were just in a, in a bad way. But there was also the miracle. We're told that this man, he was there for 38 years. He was an invalid. And he was there for 38 years. But 38 years he was an invalid. But he was there a long time. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had been already there a long time. A long time in, in this situation. There was something about this pool that, that kept the people there, and there was something that they felt that when the, the water was stirred, that whoever got down there first, that they would be healed. Whatever that was, it's, it's not clear. But this man believed anyway. At least that if he could get into the pool when the water was stirred, he would be healed. But he never got there. He, wa he wasn't able because he couldn't move. It would seem that others had gone down before him. But he didn't manage. There a long time in that same position. When is there there's someone today and You've been in, in that way that you are a long time. 
you're not, you're not saved. You've never known that coming to Jesus and being forgiven, being, being born again. But maybe you're very faithful coming along to church. Maybe you've been coming for a long time. Maybe you've been listening to the services. Maybe you've been listening for a long time. And you're still in the same position. You're still in the same situation. A bit like the man by the pool. He had been there a long time. Perhaps you've witnessed others coming. Perhaps you've known family members coming. Perhaps you've known a friend coming. Perhaps you've witnessed others coming forward and taking their place at the Lord's table. You, you, you've witnessed these things, but you, you've, you've never come forward. And you've been like this a long time. What is keeping you? What is keeping you there? And the question would be the same for anyone like this as it was for the man by the pool that Jesus said to him. Do you want to get well? Do you want to? Do you want to be saved? Do you want to be assured of heaven when you, when you die? Do you want to know your, your life fulfilled, your sins forgiven? And Jesus Christ to come into your life and be your savior. That you can follow him. Do you really want that? See the sick man answered. Sir. I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred. And while I am going another steps down before me. It's like he's saying well. You know. If I, if I could get there, I, I, I would get there. But I've, I've no one to help me. Who's going to help me? The reality is that no one can help him. And the reality is that no one can help you apart from Jesus. And the reality for this man is the one that can help him was standing before him. And the reality for us today is the one that can help us is here with us. Because that's his promise. Where his people are gathered together, he said he will be here with us. Is that not wonderful? And you're, a peop you're someone maybe that is just desperately needing help. And you're in the place where you're most likely to get help. And the one who is able to help you is here. Because that's his promise. You've been like that a long time. Who's going to help me? How many people are, are trying? How many people are trying like, like I was trying to, to scrub the shower with more cleaning stuff and more energy and more scrubbing, and more wiping, just to see that it was never getting clean. How many people are like that? You're trying. You're desperately trying. You're trying to be better. You're trying to live an upright moral life. But you'll never, ever do it. Never. Because that's why Jesus came. He came as a savior. That you can be saved. That your sins can be washed clean. And wiped away and remembered no more. Do you want to be well? You see, there were others there that day. But Jesus saw him. How wonderful is that? We read that Jesus saw him. Is he seeing you? What would it take? You might say, well, I don't know if Jesus has seen me or not. I don't know, but I just know in my heart I've got a need, I've got a longing. We're told that Jesus saw this man. And you might be asking, well, what would it take for Jesus to see me this morning in, in Hilton Church or if you're watching at home? What would that take? 
Well, I want to go back to the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, and, and listen to what it says there. Therefore, it says, the Lord waits to be gracious to you, and therefore he exalts himself to show mercy to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait for him. For a people, chapter 30, verse 19, for a people shall dwell in Zion, in Jerusalem, you shall weep no more. He will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. As soon as he hears it, he answers you. The Lord waits to be gracious to you. And he exalts himself to show mercy to you. He will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. As soon as he hears it, he answers you. Isn't that wonderful? The Lord waits. Could the Lord be waiting for the cry of your heart? Because this is a wonderfully encouraging word. As soon as he hears it, he will answer. And if you are like this man, if you're, if you're in this state that, that you're in, still going on in your sin, and you've been like that a long time, the reason that you've never been born again, the reason that you've never known his forgiveness, the reason that you've never known the Lord Jesus Christ coming into your life as Savior is because he has never heard your cry. But he waits to be gracious to you. And as soon as he hears it, he will answer. You see, that's the, that's the God that we worship. That, that, that's the Savior that we look to. He's not somebody just waiting to, to wield the, the big stick. But he waits to be gracious to you. And at the sound of your cry, he waits. He will answer you. He ordered the man to do something he couldn't do. 38 years an invalid, he couldn't even get himself to the pool. He couldn't move. He was just there. How could he get up and carry his bed? Just said to him, get up. You see, but that's, that's the way, that's, that's the Savior we come to. He, he does the impossible. And, and we, we, we can't know our hearts cleansed and our sins forgiven without him. But when Jesus comes, when he comes into our lives, we can know our sins forgiven. You see, this is the power of the gospel. And we must never underestimate the power of the gospel. It's Jesus' power. It's the power of the word. And at once the man was healed and he took up his bed and walked because Jesus came along. Like he came along to Bartimaeus when he was blind and Bartimaeus cried to him, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. What do you want me to do for you, Lord? I want to, I want to receive my sight. Receive your sight, your faith has made you. Well, that's the power of the word of Jesus to the, the, the lame man on the mat. Son, your sins are forgiven. He said, who does he think he is? He is God's son. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. He has authority on earth to forgive sins. And that includes your sins. And that includes my sins when we come to him and we cry out to him for, for mercy and for forgiveness. You see, what a wonderful savior we have. But the, the, all the people weren't happy. The Jews were there and they, they heaped extra rules on top of what was, was given at Mount Sinai, the law of Moses, and they weren't healed. They were more concerned about this man carrying his mat than, than they were about the fact that he was healed when they should have been rejoicing. And this was the beginning of them, uh, beginning to, to persecute Jesus and uh, they, they wanted to kill him. I'm not going to go into uh, that just now, but I just want to move on to the final point as time is marching on. <coughs> want just to look at, the, there's a warning in this as well. Um, Jesus, we're told, found him in the temple and he said, go and sin no more. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you are well. Sin no more that nothing worse may happen to you. For, for this man being, being physically healed, this was amazing. This was a miracle of Jesus. We're not saying today that everyone 
who, who comes to him with a disease or an illness that he's going to heal, but he is a, a, a miracle work in God and he is able to heal. And th that's just amazing. But that wasn't enough for this man. You see, being physically healed was one thing, but he, need to be, he needed to be spiritually healed. He needed Jesus. He needed his sin dealt with. And that's why him, he said, see, you are well. Sin no more that nothing worse may happen to you. I'm sure you, you, you'll have known people, and so have I, that, that they've gone through a difficult time. Perhaps they've gone through a, a, a time of illness that, that somehow it seems to have brought them closer to the Lord somehow. And you, you think, well, I just hope that, that that person goes on. But once they start to get better and, and the time of difficulty and struggle and trial passes, they again just drift away from the Lord. You see, there are people like that. But this, Jesus is reminding this man, he said, see, you are well. You, you remember what the Lord has done for you. The, this, this miraculous work of, of the power of Jesus. Yes, rejoice in that. That is amazing in itself. Be amazed at God's goodness. But don't go on in a life of sin. That's really what Jesus is saying. Go and sin no more. Don't go on in a life of sin. You see, his life needed to change inwardly. Don't go on in a life of sin. In, if this change was going to take place, you see, this is not about turning over a new leaf. This is not about a new year resolution if we're into such things. This is not about trying our best just to be better. This is life transforming. This is a work that only God can do. Because he says, go and sin no more. Or something worse will happen to you. You might say, well, he was an invalid for 38 years. Can it get much worse? Oh, yes, it can. It can get much worse. Something that this world seems to have passed by. Something that this, this, this day that we live in, people seem to have forgotten is this. That there's a day of judgment coming. There's a day when everyone will stand before God and give an account. Jesus is saying this to this man, your life needs to change. Do not go on in a life of sin or something worse. What would be worse? To fall into the judgment of God. To go on in a life of sin and reach the end of your days and be lost in a lost eternity forever. You know, the Bible talks about it as a place of outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There'll be no let up, there'll be no comfort, but pain and sorrow and regret without end. Friends, that's why Jesus came. That's why Jesus suffered the agony of Calvary. He took it, he bore the punishment for sin for everyone who will come, for everyone who will just cry out to him. You know, as soon as he hears your cry, he will answer. Because he has already paid the price. He has already taken the punishment. He's done it for everyone who will come to him. And friends, if you're not forgiven today, if you're still going on in a life of sin, like he said to this man, sin no more. Don't go on in a life of sin. Or something worse will happen. But turn. There's a hymn. We sometimes sing and the chorus says. Oh turn. While the saviour in mercy is calling. Is waiting. And steer for the harbour light. For how do you know but your soul. May be drifting. Over the deadline tonight. Oh turn you know that God is speaking to you today. 
you need to turn. You need to come to him. He needs to hear that cry from your heart, Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord, forgive me. I want to be yours. Make me ready for heaven. And the wonderful thing is this, that as soon as he hears that cry, he will answer. Who will help me? You might be saying. Who will help me? Well, anybody who knows Jesus, I'll help you. The folks here will help you. But ultimately, only Jesus can help you when you come to him. Will you come if you've never come before? Will you call out to him? A prayer. Lord, forgive me. Have mercy on me. Oh Lord, we pray that you would help us. Help us to come. Help us to cry. Help us to plead with you for forgiveness and mercy because we thank you that you are the God who waits to be gracious and to show mercy and kindness. We're told that at the sound of your cry, at the sound of our cry, you will hear and you will answer. Oh Lord, may there be cries ascending up to you this day and may there be gracious, lovely, blessed answers and may there be those who can tell of what Jesus has done for them. We ask it in your precious name. Amen. Our closing praise is from Psalm 130. Psalm 130 in the Scottish Psalter, part of the psalm book. And that's on page 421. 421. It talks about that cry, doesn't it? It says, Lord, from the depth I cried. To thee I cried. My voice, Lord, do thou hear, and to my supplications voice give an attentive ear. Uh, verse 3, or the second stanza says, Lord, who shall stand? If thou, O Lord, should mark iniquity, know no one, apart from the next line, but yet with thee forgiveness is. There's forgiveness with him that feared thou mayest be less. Sing this psalm together, and if we're able, we'll stand to sing, please.
And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.